there are ministries that have made mistakes and this person made mistake and then we've made videos and media people have made videos and people are sharing it and all that. Please don't do that. Don't do that. Here's the deal. It really doesn't matter whether, they are, whether they did it or didn't do it. As far as you and I are concerned, what possible good can come from sharing that? The Bible says, if you and your brother have a fallout, have an issue with each other, you and your sister, two sisters have an issue with each other in the Lord, it tells us don't drag your brother, but we're going to say sister, okay? Don't drag your sister to court in front of the unbelieving world because that will be a reproach to those people that see that that are not believers, right? What does that tell you? Family business gets dealt with in the family, right? And the only thing that can come from that is actually causing people that don't know the Lord to say, I want nothing to do with that. Now, I'm zealous for righteousness. I totally understand. We want to like, I'm going to show people this is wrong and this is evil. I understand that. But in the case of dealing with the church, uh, can imagine King David, you know, when he sinned with Bathsheba, if all the people in Israel would have worn signs through town, you know, that David is an adulterer, he's a killer, he's a this, he's a that, you know, and let's bring him down off the throne. You know, it's just an example, but we've all made some mistakes. I'm not, I'm not uh, justifying anyone's sin at all. Actually, the Bible says as believers and teachers, we're going to be judged with a greater judgment because we are in that role. We are in that position. And don't you think God knows how to deal with his, right? We don't need, actually, we should take the attitude that the woman caught in adultery that Jesus took. Everybody came with their stones and they were ready to stone her, right? Any of you as women ever been in a place like that where somebody was ready to condemn you because of your divorce, because of your sin, because of your background, because you made some mistakes? And even though you love Jesus, you go to the family reunion and uncle so-and-so is quick to remind you of your drug addiction you had, right? And all these things you used to do. And so people want to throw up your past to you and it is throwing up, right? It's like, I don't need to hear that anymore. I don't want that anymore. So we just need to be wise. When Jesus was confronted with that situation, she was an adulterer. She was caught and they did have the law on their side. But Jesus said, you who's without sin, cast that first stone. And the Bible records that the older ones stepped back first. Why is that? Maturity, been around longer, made some mistakes as a new Christian, pointed the finger of blame, got caught up in the rock throwing and realized the more rocks they threw, the more they got thrown back at them, right? And so the older ones backed off and then the younger ones looked around and said, I guess the more mature ones are backing off. There's a lesson in this. The more mature ones are backing away from that. So I better back away from it too. That's how mature believers lead other believers, right? We don't say, hey, everybody get your stone. Let's all go for this one, right? You know, look at this adulterous woman. Look at this problem. Look at what she messed up. Look at how, whatever, right? You don't know the circumstance. You don't know the situation. You don't know who's pointing a finger blame. You don't know the lies that have been told. You don't know their pain, their pressure, their problems. Pain seeks pleasure when people give out too much. And they get to a situation where they're just drained. They do stupid stuff like you and I both do, right? So I'm not, I'm not justifying anybody. I'm just saying we need to be mature and realize there's nothing good that's going to come out of throwing stones. Think of it as family. You have family. When your kids mess up or your family messes up, do you actually go and take the pulpit and start telling everybody what, their, what your child did, what your family did? Uh, if it's something laughable and they're okay with it, but if it's something serious, you don't do that. They have to be the one that says, I sinned, I messed up, let me tell you my story. But you're not gonna go, hey, let me tell you about my, my son's sin or my daughter's sin or my friend's sin. Or, and when your friend messes up, what do you do? You're quick, if they come to you and call you on the phone, I messed up and they're crying. Do you say, yeah, let me get my stones? <laughs> I don't think so. What are you quick to say? God loves you, God will forgive you. He still has a future for you. Even though you've made a mistake, he still cares, he still loves you. Don't be condemned. 
You know, forgive yourself as God's forgiven you. Get back up on your feet and move forward, right? And so we have to hope and pray when someone's caught in sin, a minister mess up or somebody messes up that we can say, God, I pray for them. I pray they repent. I pray that you send someone along their path that they would get right with you. I don't know their pain. I don't know their problem. I don't know their decisions or choices. I gotta keep myself in check. Honestly, we have to check our own motives, what is my motive for sharing this, going out and trashing this and doing all these things? Is my motive possibly, just possibly, that I want to be in the know and want people to look to me, want people to see that I know this or I know that? So we just have to be wise. What is my motive for sharing? Who is this going to hurt? Who is this going to help? If there's a problem and it's associated with something that will affect somebody. It's not gossip to go to them and say, I want to, I have a concern about this place you were at or this thing you did because I care about you. That's different than just going on social media and talking about people. We know nothing. There's no records. Why would I listen to media when media's lied to me about everything else? I mean, we got to get smarter than that, right? We really do. If they throw us a bone and we run every time, they know how to work us. Every 10 years, they go dig up some dirt on a lot of ministers and throw it out there. So everybody in the body of Christ gets all in a rage. And instead of watching what the devil's doing and holding him in check and binding him and taking authority over what he's accomplishing, instead we get into gossip and all this stuff and our faith get, gets hurt. And then we hurt all the people we've been witnessing to. All right? One time I had a an association, this lady kept coming to me, please pray for my husband, please pray for my husband, please pray for my husband. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for her husband. And guess what? One day he got born again. He came to the altar, he was all excited. And you know what she did? She started telling him all the problems in the church. It wasn't long before he was gone. She sabotaged her own prayers. She sabotaged what she was trying to accomplish. So be wise, be wise. Your friends are watching. They're watching your witness, your testimony, and they won't even know about 99% of what happens in the family of God that mess, people that mess up, and there are always going to be people that mess up. They're all in the scripture, right? I've messed up. Has anyone ever messed up? Yeah, yeah. As I stand before you today, I don't have any gall in my heart or sin that I know of, and I'm walking before the Lord. But at the same time, there's things that the God has to even convict me of, right? And don't you love that about God? He's always encouraging. And then later you go, God, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> and he goes, because you couldn't handle it. It's kind of like looking at an old picture, right? You ever look at your old pictures and you go, why didn't someone tell me? <laughs> well, your mother did, but you didn't listen. <laughs> All you young girls, <laughs> the latest fads and fashions. Anyway, there's seven mountains of culture that are trying to impact all of us. And government is one of them. That's why I'm talking about it. We've got to take back what the enemy's stolen. Government is so important. It's so crucial. Where you live, what you live under, the laws you live under, the way they're enforced. Even Paul, even Paul, when they were ready to flog him, he said, is it right for you to flog a Roman citizen? He appealed to the law. He said, hey, this is the law, and I have a law that protects me. And they were like, whoa. They were worried when they found out he was a Roman citizen. So we need to know our citizenship is in heaven, and we have a God that's backing us up. Amen? And the Holy Spirit's backing us up. But we also live, if you're in America, you have a nation that has a constitution, and there's laws. And we have taken far long, for too long, we have taken for too long, far too long, for granted our constitution, our rights, our freedoms. Talk to anyone that came from another country and they'll tell you this is the best place in the world to live. And people flock here to come live in this country. But what the enemy's done is he's done the same thing that I was just sharing with you about the body of Christ. He's pointed the finger of blame and found fault with America. Found fault, fault enough that people go, oh, let's get rid of this. It's not working. Whoa, wait a second. 85% of the time is working, 
I t- anybody else tend to lean to perfection too much a little bit? I was delivered from perfection, but every once in a while I can go back there a little bit too much, right? And I had to go, no, I live by grace, not perfection. And so I have to remind myself, I don't live by perfection. I'll never get it perfect. So why do we look at things, and this is the trap of Satan, look at your marriage and go, he's not perfect. I can't live with this man. He didn't take the trash out yesterday. Well, he brought you breakfast in bed. You know, do you want to get rid of that deal? No, right? So my husband makes mistakes. I make mistakes. Sometimes I spit when I speak. (laughs) But 80% of what I do is going to help you, okay? Same thing with this nation. People are flocking to come here. I have traveled the world. There is no place like America. No place, no place socialism, Marxism, communism, I've been in their countries. It is trash. Venezuela used to be a productive country. It had more oil reserve than any nation in the world. It's totally trash because of Marxism. They bought up all of the, you know, they took all the land from the people. They took the oil from the people. Happening right now in our country. Happening right now. They're buying up the farmland. They're not letting them pump oil. They're making us get it from foreign places because there's an agenda to destroy America because America's not perfect. Well, look around. Socialism, Marxism, communism is far, far from anywhere close to perfect. Uh, Not even, it's not. It's not only is it not perfect, it's antichrist, okay? I can prove it to you in the word of God, but we won't go there tonight. Anyway, So we got to talk about government politics. I was talking to Aaron Bear of CCV and he said, Drenda, your ladies, you tell your happy life women this. He said, you tell them that state legislators, lawmakers, those are the ones that make the laws that we live by. And he said, we usually don't know their names, but he said, I can give you their names. And if your ladies will call them, they just one call. If they get five calls, they go nuts. He said, they just go nuts. He said, they don't fear lobbyists. And they don't really fear the average citizen. But he said they are terrified of mama bears. And grandmama bears, he says, are the worst. So I said, I happen to have about 1,500 ladies that I can let know when they need a phone call from mama. Okay? (laughs) So anyway, so some of you that feel passionate, you're probably prophetic you're like, don't be so hard, Pastor Drenda. I know your gift is mercy and we need your mercy gift. But we also need a mama bear gift that says, stop it, devil. You're not taking my freedom and you're not taking my kids' freedom and you're not taking my nation and you're not taking everything that my grandfather, my great-great-grandfather fought for, stood for. Hey, thank you for watching this video. And I've started a new YouTube channel. It's called Drenda on Guard. Come over there and check out all the things we're doing there where we declare a war on sadness and have a conversation about information that's happening in your life. Go to Drenda on Guard and I'd love to talk to you there.